challenging. All right, let's come to the tops of our mat. Standing in Sama Sitihi. Nobody's going to run away from me if I do the chant. Nope. So we should chant. Oh, Vande Gurunam Charanara Vende, Sandar Shita Swachmasu Kava Bode, Nishreya Se Jangali Kayamane, Samsara Hala Hala Mohashantie, Abahu Purushakaram, Shaka Chakrasi Jaharinam, Sahasra Shirasam Shvetam, Pranamami Patanjalin. Oh. Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, hands come up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, take your vinyasa. Dasha Dirga Rechika Purika. That actually means 10 slow, deep inhales and exhales. We're not going to do 10. Inhale, look between those hands. Exhale, come on forward. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to your side, mountain pose. Let's do it again. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, coming up. Exhale, vinyasa. Inhaling, upward facing, Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Exhaling, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Nabi Drishti. So if you want to wiggle your dog, you can. Donna used to get so annoyed at me for wiggling my dog. She was like, this is a stronger. This isn't vinyasa. You stay still and down dog. But if you guys want to wiggle it, just a little bit, you can. Inhaling, look up between your hands. Exhale, walk step. Come on forward. Halfway lift for the next inhale and fold. Inhaling, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to your side, mountain pose. Again, inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, take your vinyasa. I made the mistake of doing basically, uh, what are they called, leg lifts on the ball where you're laying on your belly and you're lifting your legs as much as you can. My hamstrings are killing me. It's good for the... Peacock pose, though. It's also good for uh, back pain in general, strengthening all the muscles along the back. One more breath. Inhaling, look between those hands. Exhale, come on, forward. Inhaling, half lift and fold. Inhale, come all the way up. Exhale, hands to your side, mountain pose. One more, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, vinyasa. Imagine I'm there giving you a nice down dog assist. Maybe lifting your hips. 
decompressing the low back. One more breath. Inhaling, looking forward. Exhale, come on forward. Halfway for that next inhale. Fold. Coming all the way up. Samasiddhi, so mountain pose. Surya Namaskar B, inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold. Inhaling, half lift. Exhale, vinyasa. Inhaling, upward facing. Exhale, downward facing. Left heel plants, bring that right foot forward, warrior one. Exhale, vinyasa. Upward facing dog and downward facing dog. Right foot plants, left foot forward, warrior one. And vinyasa. You guys are my guinea pigs with this e earbud in because on the laptop you can separate and just use the mic and listen with the, the, the I guess the speakers on the laptop. I have the smallest ear holes on the planet and this earbud is huge. It's so funny. <laughs> so if you see me fidgeting with my ears, that's why. One more breath. Inhaling, looking forward. And then exhale it, come on forward. Halfway left inhale. And fold. Inhaling back to chair. Samasiddhi. Let's do it again. Inhale, Utkatasana. Forward fold. Uttanasana. Udva Uttanasana, halfway lift. And take your vinyasa. Right foot comes forward, warrior one. Chaturanga. Upward facing. Auto Mukha Svanasana. I said Auto Mukha dog. That's funny. Left foot forward, warrior one. And vinyasa. Five breaths here. One more. Looking forward, come on forward, half lift and fold. Inhale, Utkatasana. Samasiddhi. One more, you guys getting warm yet? Utkatasana. <laughs> you have your heater on, inhale, half lift. Yes. Exhale, vinyasa. I made Sunita a promise that I wouldn't get sweaty because she redid my eyebrows today. I broke quarantine for vanity. Right foot comes forward, warrior one. And, and she's like, you cannot get sweaty for one week. Can you do that, Jennifer Vinyasa? And I was like, I am always cold. It's not a problem. I won't put a heater on. Left foot comes forward, warrior one. The things we do for va vanity and vinyasa. But she was wearing them. Pardon? You're breaking up really bad, Elizabeth. Oh, I said, why can't you sweat? Oh, um, she did the tattoo on my eyebrow. That that microblading because of that scar. One more breath. Inhale, looking forward. Exhale, come on forward. Halfway lift, inhale. And fold. Inhaling back to Utkatasana. Exhale, Samasitihi.
Take your hands to your hips, open up your feet, hips with distance apart. Inhale, head up. Exhale, forward fold. Grab a hold of those big toes with your peace fingers. Head up for the inhale. See if you can spiral your inner thighs towards each other as you pull yourself down. Exhale. Yeah, caterpillars are annoying, but it was the scar that, for some reason, the tattoo is not sticking into the scar. Inhale, head up. Exhale, hands under your feet and pull yourself down. And I knew she was struggling big time, so I don't know. Vanity wins. <laughs> now put, put a little bit of weight into your toes and try to massage your wrist a little bit and see if you can bring your hips forward, Elizabeth. Are your, are your hammies tight today? Me? Yeah. Uh, a little bit. Inhaling. We'll release those hands from under the feet. Exhale, soften the knees with your hands to the waist. Roll up on your inhale. Jump your feet together, some CTE. Medium sized step to the back of the mat, coming into your Utita Trikonasana, right toes face back, right hands reach back, and coming into your triangle on the right. So you got your right leg forward. So actually, yeah. you take a big step back with your right foot, turn your body towards the rear of your mat. Yeah. There you go. And then come into it. So your backside to me, reaching the right side, Stephanie, not the left. Or it doesn't matter. Other side? We'll so you step back with the right foot. But you can do it that way. So that's my right foot. Yep. Okay. And the inhale coming up, exhale, other side. So this time we'll shift our hips back and reach for the left foot. That looks like it's your right foot, Stephanie. Is that your left? It's my right. Okay. We're I was back. like, am I crazy? No, it doesn't I'm, matter. I did my left first because I didn't want to get to look at my butt. I'm wearing shorts. Inhale coming up. <laughs> Exhale. Let's go to a big step to the front. So I'm a CDH. Mountain pose. Now we're going to take that right foot, step it to the back of the mat. Turn your toes towards the back of the mat. Pull your right hip back. Left hand comes down to the inside or the outside of that right foot. Right hand comes up, revolve triangle. Was that a better way of getting us there? It at least computed with my brain. Inhale coming up. Exhale, other side. Inhale, come up. Exhale, mountain pose up to the top of the mat. Now we're going to take an even bigger step to the back of the mat, extended side angle. Right knee bends really deep. You can bring your right elbow to that right knee. Reach the left arm forward. Or you can take your right hand down to the mat on the inside of the outside of that right foot and have that left arm reaching up and out like it's extending from the foot for another three breaths. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, other side. Hmm. I think I have a little bit of poison ivy. If my husband gave it to me, he is so grounded. <laughs> Inhale, coming up. Judson and our dog are both on steroids. It's really, really kind of funny. Now we're going to take, let's just rotate it out. So turn towards the back of your mat again. 
If you want, you can come down to your left knee. That might help you to get the twist a little bit better. Left elbow to the outside of that right knee. Bring the thumbs back to your heart center. You can hang out here, deepen the lunge, or take the left hand to the outside of the right foot. Left foot goes down like warrior two, warrior one. Right hand reaches forward. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, let's do that on the other side. Eventually, you get to the point where you swoop up, twist around, and just go straight into it. Oh, and you don't have to move dinner around because I eat like a great grandmother at 4.35 o'clock. Dinner or boogie? <laughs> I do eat dinner really that early. It's kind of embarrassing. Inhale, coming up. Woo, maybe. Exhale, some is GTE. Now we're going to do a medium sized step to the back of the mat. Arms out wide to a T. On the inhale, you look up. Exhale, forward fold. Bring the fingertips in line with the toes. Stephanie, if you want, you can face the other way. Now you want to see my booty. <laughs> That's what I've been doing while I've been teaching classes. I'm like, for the sake of the audience, and then I switch around. <laughs> Don't want to put that, that side forward. Inhale. Lifting the head, soften the knees for the exhale, bring the hands to the waist, then roll yourself up, inhale. Squeeze the elbows back a little bit for that next inhale, and then forward fold. Eventually, you'll get down every bit as low with your hands on your waist as you do with your hands on the mat. Have you noticed that, Elizabeth? Yes, it's really easy. Soften the knees. Inhale, come all the way up. And next inhale, hands out wide to a T. Pull them down and away from you as you clasp them behind your back. The inhale comes head up. Exhale, forward fold. I always soften my knees on the way down. Sort of tuck the chin to make room for the shoulders. And then if you tend to lock out your elbows, make sure you soften them. Like, my elbows have gotten too loosey-goosey lately. You'll find that if you do that, it's a little bit more of a stretch for the front head, the front head of your shoulder. One more. Inhale, coming up. And then exhale, release those hands. Take your arms out wide to a T. Inhale here. Exhale, Ooh, forward fold. Grab hold of your excuse me, big toes with your peace fingers, and then pull yourself down. I forgot what count I was with my breath. It was feeling too good. So you inhale, head up, exhale, soften the knees, hands to waist, inhale, come up. Big step to the front, some is to he. Now we're coming into pyramid pose. So hands back behind you, reverse prayer, fingertips down or up. Medium size step to the back of that mat. Try to square your hips off here and then forward fold. If you tend to dump in the low back on that forward fold, soften the knees, it'll make it harder for you to dump in the low back. Soften the front knee. It's still so weird practicing in these leggings that look like jeans, even though I've had them now for a while. It still is weird psychologically. I don't know why. Soften the right knee. Pull yourself up. Turn towards the left. Turn towards the front. Soften the left knee now as you forward fold. 
that was something that I learned when my low back was really, really bad to not to soften the knees on the way down. Ashtanga can sometimes get a bad rep for back pain. Tuck your chin even here. Don't look at the toes because that can be wonky on the neck. Eventually your forehead comes to your shin. Soften in the knee, pull yourself up, use your glutes. Big step forward, Samus Chitihi. Ah. Okay, so now we're coming into everybody's favorite part of the practice. Balancing pose, left hand to your waist, grab hold of your right knee or your right big toe. Inhale here, exhale forward fold. Inhale, head up. Exhale, take that right foot out to the side. Heel in, toe out. That might help this feel better in the hip. Inhale, bring that foot forward. Exhale, you forward fold. Inhale, head up. Exhale, release it here, holding it up here for five breaths. Set it down. Hallelujah. Shake it out. Shakira style. All right. Ground down a whole bunch through that right foot, picking up that left knee or the left big toe. Head up to that inhale. Exhale, forward fold. <laughs> inhale, head up. Sorry about that, guys. Exhale, open it to the side. Maybe you gaze in the opposite direction of the foot. Bring it forward and then forward fold. Head up for that inhale. Exhale, let it go. Five breaths here. Set it down. Oh, shake it out. Now we're going to come into Ardha Baddha Padma, Padmasana. Take that right foot and come to your figure four or your half lotus. So if you don't have a half lotus on the right, just do figure four. If you've got your half lotus, you reach that right hand around and behind you to try to grab the right foot and then you forward fold. So it's technically you inhale to lift the head, exhale, then you inhale, come up, and then you release. And I need to shake it out. Apparently my piriformis was not loving that. All right, other side, half lotus. I'm glad you all cannot hear everything that's popping on me today. Holy moly. <clears throat> Inhale, head up. Exhale, soften the knee. Coming all the way up with control if you can. And then set it down. All right. Now we're going to vinyasa to ukatasana. Inhale, hands up. Exhale, forward fold. Head up, inhale. And vinyasa. Coming into your Utkatasana. That stink 
think an earbud. I'm gonna have to find smaller things. Forward fold. Does it sound remarkably different using the mic? Inhale, head up. And vinyasa. <laughs> We're going to plant that left foot, bring that right foot forward, warrior one. It sounds a little different, like you're in a cave a little bit. It, it only sounds a little better? Well, it sounds slightly like you're in a cave. All right, straighten that right leg, turn towards the left, turn towards the rear, other side. Open up, warrior two. Straighten that left leg, turn it towards the right. Turn the right toes forward, warrior two at the front. On the exhale, vinyasa. Looking between those hands, walk, jump, or sit down. Coming to your dandasana pose, where the real yoga happens. I hate it when I hear that, but I say it all the time. Hands on either side of the hip. Suck the belly in, sitting up tall and straight. Check in with that pelvic floor. I was jumping on the trampoline today. Quite proud of myself. Head up, inhale, and then forward fold. Caleb's at the front door just looking in like he's a prisoner trying to come in. All right, Pashimottanasana A, you grab hold of your big toes and you pull yourself down. B, your thumbs are on the front, the top part of your feet. Fingers are wrapping around the outside, trying to flatten your feet. Head up just a little bit. Now we're going to go, if you're at A, go to B. If you're at B, go to C. C is where you bind all the way around your feet. Try to grab your finger, your wrist, your forearm, whatever you can, depends on how long your legs are, and then forward fold. Your back is rounded, your chin is tucked, forehead towards your shin. Inhale, head up. Ooh, add extra credit. Don't stand up, don't sit all the way up. Lean forward, hands by, beside your calves. Lift up your right leg. Lift up your left leg. Now see if you can without sitting up, leaning forward, lift both. Hold it for five, four, three, two, one. Holy crap, that counts as a jump back. <laughs> Vinyasa. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping through to seated, we're going to come into reverse tabletop. Toes together, heels apart, fingertips facing those hips. Rotate your shoulders forward and make a nice little shelf for the neck. And then pull yourself up for five of the longest breaths ever. Squeeze your butt cheeks a whole bunch. And come down. Take your vinyasa. OK, 
Can you believe it? I'm turning on the fan. It's only so that I don't sweat and ruin my tattoo. All right. Here we are in a comfortable seated position. We're going to come to Ardha Bada Padma Pashimottanasana. Take your leg, love on that leg like it's a little baby. And then when you're nice and open, you're going to come to half lotus on the right. So I have to get that flesh out of the way in order to get my heel to my belly button. And then that helps me to get my right knee forward. Right arm wraps around behind. And then you forward fold. Good. Inhale, come up. Let's just go straight to the other side. So take that left foot, remove the calf muscle maybe, and love that little hip baby. Just really depends on how your hips are feeling, like if you need this little wine and dine time, or if you can just hop right into lotus. This hip usually doesn't bother me. Sometimes the right hip can be persnickety. So you want that left heel to your belly button eventually. Wrapping that left arm around and behind and forward fold. I can't really see, but I think Elizabeth's already there. Yeah. Inhale, come up. Exhale, let's take our vinyasa. Inhale, look between those hands. Exhale, walk, step, jump to the top of your mat. Come into an itty bitty baby ball squat. Oh crud, the kids took my yoga mat somewhere. Okay, now take your, take your yoga mat and roll it up two or three times. You're gonna put your heels on this area that's elevated ever so slightly. Here you are in your tiny little ball squat, elevated heels. I'm gonna to go to the right, even though you guys are supposed to go to the left. Take your right elbow to the outside of that left thigh, and then bring your hands to your heart center. That's step one. Step two, you bind around that right leg only. Step three, this is easier for those that have smaller legs, you bind around both legs. Oh my gosh, I bound around both legs today. Almost, I'm counting it. Are the feet supposed to be together? Yeah, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, <laughs> ideal. Yeah, so eventually your toes are together, heels are slightly apart like in Thama Sipihi. All yeah. right, come on out of this. I'm gonna do a forward fold. If you want, you can vinyasa. But you, it's just like you were standing in Sama Sitihi, and eventually your feet will be flat on the mat. What Manju has said is people's Achilles genetically and depending on what they've done in their life and calves, this is really hard. So that elevation can help a lot to cr create the stability you need. I don't know if that was an answer to your question. Yeah. But another thing, another thing that helps Stephanie is to not be in quite as low of a squat. It's easier for the heels to get down if you're squat if you're squatting more like this with your more like in a chair pose instead of in a ball squat. Yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. Release this. Roll out your mat. Lord, I see that one looks nice today. And take your vinyasa. Look in between those hands. We're going to step, jump, hop our way through. Keep your left leg in a half hero's pose. Right leg comes out. Try to get both butt cheeks on the mat. Mm, Lord have mercy. All right, so the series one version of this is you forward fold over that right leg. The series two is you bring the right leg up. 
and you take your forehead to the shin with your leg up. No. Nope. And I'm pretty, pretty sure I did this on the opposite side first, but that's okay. All right, releasing this. Ooh. We're gonna release that left foot from a half hero's pose, take the right foot back. Although that's a really fun transition. Are you working on that transition, Elizabeth? Jumping through into a half hero's? No. <laughs> I don't I think, think my shoulders are ready. Oh, gotcha. All right, once you got yourself kind of seated, either forward fold or bring that left leg up to your nose. All righty, releasing this and take your vinyasa. Oh, I can do it on that side. You what? I got it on that side. I saw it. I saw it. Your leg was up high. <laughs> Beautiful chaturangas, guys. All right, look, coming on forward. Nope, I just lied. Come down to your belly. I should have just looked at Elizabeth. And now we're coming into Vekasana frog pose. I was and watching so, you. <laughs> you were hoping I'd skip it. That's hilarious. So a Sangha frog is different than yin frog. You basically grab hold of your big toe with your thumb and the pointer finger and then bring your elbow up. So you internally rotate that shoulder to press the heel down. Your knees are going to come out thumb. And then if you want to, try to do both at the same time. Eventually, the heels touch the, the heels touch the mat on the outside of your butt cheeks. Hashtag goals, and your chest lifts. Frog. It doesn't matter if it's the Yin frog or the Shtanga frog. I hate frog. <laughs> oh, holy moly! All right, come on out of this. Say a little prayer of thanks that that's over with. Push yourself up. Oh, Lord have mercy. And downward facing dog. Now we're going to go straight back to our bellies and get a little bit more posterior chain work. So high plank, slowly down to the belly. Hands down to the side, palms down. Channel your inner little mermaid to bring your legs together. Inhale, lifting your chest and the legs for five breaths. Fingertips in line with the chest, holding this for five breaths. Releasing it, push yourself up, downward facing dog. Holy mamacita, inhaling back to high plank. Exhale, down to your belly. Now we're coming into Danyarasana or floor bow, grabbing one or both feet. Inhale, kicking up, holding it here for five. Now we're going to roll over towards the right, Pavrita Dhanurasana. So just roll. Technically, there's a vinyasa, but we're skipping it. Inhaling back to your belly, really nice floor bow, and then over to the other side. Inhale back to your belly, kicking in for a five. Holy moly, releasing this. Oh my gosh. Once you wrap it those legs. And then push yourself up. Downward facing dog. That sounded a little bit like I was about to huck a loogie. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a little detour here and do either pigeon or a splits prep. 
Yogi's Choice. The reason for this is uh, hip openers help with your back bend. And I haven't done second series in hmm, at least a few weeks. You're going to pop right into your back bend anyway. <laughs> what was that, Elizabeth? You're going to pop into your back bend anyway. I don't know about that. This left shoulder, you know how the body, you might feel like you're over things, but the body has memory, you know, like muscles and your body has memory. And like all of this stress, I don't know if you're, if you're super stressed, does, do old injuries pop up for you guys where it's like, God, that had not hurt in a while. Yeah. Every morning, every morning when I wake up, I'm like, ooh, that hurts. Yep. All right, let's go over to the other side. Yeah, like these old injuries of mine have been popping up and I'm convinced it's cortisol levels and I'm not willing to give up alcohol or sugar, two of my coping mechanisms. So, old injuries. Yeah, keep them, it's therapy, it's good. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stephanie, Elizabeth went out and got the pink lemonade vodka and so did Dawn. Yeah, it's delicious. It looks delicious. Oh, I have no idea what possessed me to try it, but I'm so glad I did. It's so it's refreshing. I yeah. It doesn't taste like it doesn't taste like yeah. cheap vodka. Right. Sorry if I'm grunting. Get it out. <laughs> this hip flexor is like, F that noise. All right. Releasing this. Now let's go back to our back bend. Camel pose, Ustrasana. So take your hands about two fists width distance in between those knees. I was like, oh, is it already 745? Darn. <laughs> All it? right. No, it's not. It's only 715. <laughs> Jennifer's just trying to procrastinate camel pose. Internally rotate those shoulders. So bring them forward. That usually helps to provide a little more space for the hips. Keep the tailbone lengthening down as you push the hips forward and then reach back for the heels. Eventually, your palms will be against the soles of your feet. This does feel good. Coming on out of this, take your vinyasa. Come back to your knees. Now we go for Lagu Varasana. I honestly feel like Lagu Varasana is a little easier than um, camel pose sometimes because you can cheat and let your hips go down. Basically, you slide your hands down the backs of your hammies, let your hands fall on your calves, and then bring the head down to the mat. Inhale, coming on up, and then vinyasa. Whoa. Oh. Or just down dog that noise. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now it's uh, Elizabeth's favorite pose, Kapitasana. We can do either camel or Laguvarasana, or something that you could do, um, Stephanie as prep slash also as a way to, to get the shoulders opened a little bit more for Kapitasana, which is what I'm going to do, 
is turn yourself towards a wall. I don't know if we've done this before with you in the class. Oops, hold on. And then um, reach your hands up and then reach for the wall. And every time you touch the wall, straighten your arms. So I grab the wall, my arms are bent, straighten. Walk my hands down, straighten. Straighten, holy moly, and that's where I'm staying. Oh. oh, that feels amazing in my forearm. And then come on up. Take your vinyasa. Maybe if I was allowed to sweat, I could have done more, but I'm kind of okay with that. Oh. All right. So now we're going to come into uh, the second series twists. So we're going to come with left leg in half hero's pose. Right leg like you're going for half lotus pose. Now right hand internally rotates and try to grab the right foot. Left hand comes underneath the right knee and gazes over the right shoulder. Yep, perfect. Coming on out of this, let's do that on the other side. I can never remember the names of these bloody twists. This one is. Um, this is not Arta Matsandrasana, that's the next one. Mm -hmm. I'll think about it. I think it starts with a B, doesn't it? So now right foot's in half heroes, left leg's in that half lotus, left arm reaches around and behind. Oh, maybe you lean away from it because it's an amazingly good, awesome side stretch. And then right hand goes underneath the left knee. I would never admit that I can never remember the name of this darn twist. <laughs> Feels good, and I like them better than the first series twist. All right, come on out of this. Let's take our vinyasa. I skipped Supta Vajrasana and Crows. Oh, I knew it started with the B, Bharad Vajrasana. Now, seriously, that's no wonder I can't remember it, Bharad Vajrasana. Now we're doing Ardha Matsandrasana. So now this time the left leg bends and the left heel comes to the outside of that right hip. Right foot comes up and over the left knee. Now left elbow comes to the outside of that right thigh. You can hang out right here and pray that things loosen up. If you want to take it deeper, the full expression is you bring that left hand to the inside of the right foot. So the left hand is grabbing the, the arch side of the right foot. Right hand reaches around and tries to grab the left inner thigh. Did you just get confused? No, perfect. All right, release this. Other side. I didn't get confused for a change. Sweet. So me. Right foot on the outside of that left hip. I'm going to let my head get big for a second. She actually got her left and right back. Okay, left foot goes into the outside of that right knee. Right elbow to the outside of that left thigh. And you just sit here and pray, maybe. Apparently, that's what I'm doing. If you want to take it this deeper, get the crap out of the way, and then take the right hand to the arch side of the left foot. Oh, 
All right, releasing this. Let's do three boat poses because we have time. Noasana. All right. So boat number one, feet on the mat. Boat number two, one or both. But you guys are all super strong, so let's go for boat. Right foot over the left, bend it, bring it in, push down, lift something. And then let's do that again. Left foot over the right, bend those knees, bring them in, push down, lift something. Oh, last one. Harder side on top, bend it in, push down, lift something. All right, option. Do you want to practice crow or your pinch of your ass with a forearm stand? Either one. Either. I don't have a forearm stand. My shoulders are tight as heck. So All right, then dolphin, then do dolphin pose. Let me okay. see you do dolphin pose. So have your head looking up. Yeah. Unless it's wonky on the neck. Can you do dolphin push-ups? Not really. Not really? Not well. That's good homework. Yeah. Because that's building strength yeah. and mobility. And each time you come back, push back a little bit more. Because you're going to be getting the muscles hot. So then you push back and eventually you'll be able to get yourself really open. Elizabeth, you're blending in with the wall, so I'm having trouble seeing you. Uh, okay. Oh, it's okay. You can see me. All right. Now remember that tailbone down thing. Another thing that nice that I did for Pincha is I would um, put my toe on a block and just hold it. And that's how I started figuring out my hips over my uh, shoulders or whatever. Because what I want to do is banana. And so when my foot was on the block, I couldn't banana as much. I don't know if that makes sense because you're holding the block in place, you're having to like squeeze in and that helped me to not banana out as much. Good job, guys. You got one more in you? No? Yeah. Because then we're going to move on to third series. Sweet. <laughs> that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was loud. It's hard to lift that butt up. All right, now let's go into third series because we can. All right, so we're going to come into side plank. And uh, the first few, first two poses in the third series are Vashistasana and Visva Mistrasana. I'm going to face this way so you can see. So you technically do a vinyasa, down dog, high plank, and then side plank on your right. In Ashtanga, you're trying to grab your left big toe. In order to do that, that right toe is plugged into the mat a whole bunch to help you lift it up. Nice, ladies. That is so freaking awesome. Come on, Elizabeth. And she's up. Woohoo! Set it down. 
take your vinyasa or not. And let's do that on the other side. So again, I like to flatten that whole left foot because that helps me to lift my hips up. It's a little bit easier. Whoops, until you open up too much. Oh, clearly that is not my good side. I'm gonna try it one more time. Good job. Okay. Nice, Stephanie. Good, Elizabeth. Nice. All right. So now we're doing Visva Mistrasana. Good job, guys. Now, Visva Mistrasana is like side crow. No. It's like side plank and the splits. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, do you guys know it? If you guys already know it, then you can do it. If you don't know it, you take that right foot forward to the outside of that right hand. Take your right hand to the outside of the right foot now. Now your left foot set up like warrior two. Step one is you wrap your right leg around your right bicep and you reach your left arm up. Step three is you straighten everything. And then step four, you try to smile because this is so awesome. So arm rod. <laughs> nice. That's a good one, Steph. <laughs> I saw that, Alyssa. That's what that's like the way you do it. The assist is actually the person comes behind you like you're doing right now and helps you to lift. Nice. Let's do that on the other side. Yeah, and then you're hanging like a necklace. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we never get to do this, so I thought it would be kind of fun to do this. Yeah. Right. So this time, something else you can do that makes it a little bit easier, stay on the right knee like you're setting up for side plank but instead of it being your left knee down, your right knee down. I don't know if you can see that or not, but my right knee is holding me up, not my right foot. That takes a little bit of the weight off of the core and the shoulders. Nicey, good stuff. I just don't have the lift. Yes. Yes. All right. When you guys are done, come on out of this. All right. So, do you all both have a headstand? Kind of. I know. Kind of. So yeah. the next thing I I thought we would do is headstand a crow, and then we can start closing up a little. You want to try it? Try it. So. Yeah, a wall is your friend. A wall is definitely your friend. <laughs> Technically, you start to jump into these, and I'm not ever, I don't know if I will ever jump into a headstand, I'll just be honest. But it's the tripod headstand, not the supported headstand, because we're going to uh, crow, right? So make sure that you're, you're nice and stable, I guess, in your headstand. Technically, it's uh, something else first, but we're doing crow. Uh, Woo! Yeah, and then you're supposed to lift back up. You're supposed to go back down to headstand and then pike back down. Yeah. No, I have trouble with the pike. Yeah. Tight yeah. Hip flexors. Yep. Oh yeah. You going again, E? I can do it again, I think. <laughs> <laughs> nice pike up. Nice, oh, Steph. 
That's all right. I'm so excited. <laughs> Crazy good shoulder strength. So the next step is actually the next posture. It's technically you're you've once you learn how to do that transition from headstand to crow, the rest of the transitions theoretically you've got them because you start to transition with lotus legs into kukitasana. Um, with one legged bakasana, you start to do twist and go over to the side, like uh, what is that? Parvrita, what is that? That side, whatever. Anyway, so that's how you learn how to do that that headstand to crow action or crow, headstand, crow, that sort of thing. That's how you get there from there, in case you were ever wondering. Yay! All right, so let's come back, journey back, take your feet together, knees apart, come into Baddha Konasana. We flew through the second series. Flew. Like, slid through it like butter. Warm butter on bread. Apparently, I sound northern when I say butter. Butter. Some butter. Oh, uh, all right. Mm, releasing this. Let's do turtle pose. Kormasana. So, set up like you're going to the girl doctor. I mean... <laughs> It sounds crude, but is there a better way to describe it? Because you say that and every woman in your class knows what they're talking about. All right. So step one is you just hang out here and try to get your shoulders in front of your knees and reaching, reaching, reaching. Eventually, you slide your hands in between those holes where your knees are, and then you slide your feet forward, bring your forehead to the mat, and you try to get your leg high up onto the shoulders. And then eventually you get to the point where there's not much else you could go and you try to reach your hand. After five breaths, you go into Supta Kormasana. Holy mackerel, that's awesome, you guys. So the only difference now is you're trying to take your arms and wrap them around your legs and clasp them on your back. And then your legs eventually bind over your head, not over your neck. Manju says, you don't do that over your neck nonsense. <clears throat> Holy mackerel, I'm doing it. Woohoo! Woo! Woo! The year of the turtle. That's why it's the year of the turtle. And you transition through Titi Basana. So you basically kind of sit up and your legs are on the backs of your triceps. Mm hmm. And then you roll yourself forward, Titi Basana. Maybe. And then you go to crow, and then you jump back. I didn't have any more juice. And then we close up shop with three back bends, Yogi's Choice. Technically, they are Urdhva Dhanurasanas. Oh, because I felt like a back bend right after that deep forward fold would be awesome. Just kidding. I just realized what time it was. Okay, try to get a back bend or three in.
No, come on, shoulders. <sighs> and then after your three back bends, you technically are supposed to chakrasana and then do a seated forward fold. And then you do your shoulder stand. Or you just do a happy baby. Or you just do a knees to your chest. Or you just do a waterfall pose. After shoulder stand, it's plow pose. <clears throat> and then deaf man's pose. Then back to shoulder stand. Coming into your lotus pose. And then you do your Urdhva Padmasana, upward facing lotus. And then you do Pindasana, which is where you're hugging that lotus. Oh, and then you come out of this and you technically are still in lotus pose, but you do your fish pose with lotus feet, unless you have a hairband in the way. Oh, crappers. And then you release the lotus and have both legs and both arms, basically. And then you release this. Technically, you do a chakrasana. Oh, or you could just do a happy baby. And then we do our headstand or child's pose. That's still an inversion. I've been working on headstands where my head is not actually on the mat. And I am terrible at them. Just like that. When you're done with your headstand, Come into child's pose. And then you take your Shavasana. Oh, you're so good, Elizabeth. You did the extra chaturanga. Extra credit.
slowly rolling over or wiggling fingers and toes until you're ready to roll over. Coming up to a comfortable seated position. Thank you ladies for joining me in class today. I hope you had fun. Go in peace. You wanna do the closing chant? Let me see if I can remember. I shouldn't have said anything. Let me see if I can remember this. Oh, Om Swasti Pajabi Am Paripadi Antam Mayena Margena Mahim Mahim Shaham Go Brahmane Shubi Mastunit Yam Loka Samasta Suki Nova Bantu Sarve Jana Suki Nova Bantu Samasta Samangalani Santu Muksha Kalyana Samriti Rastu Vishva Shanti Rastu Om Shanti 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 Yoga and Peace Namaste, Namaste.